Welcome back, scholars. In this video, we're going to explore the relationship between segment lengths when two chords, two secants, or a secant and a tangent cross paths in a circle. Let's get started. We'll start our investigation by looking at the intersection of two chords who meet at point E. We can see that three of the four segments formed are labeled 4, 5, and 6. The fourth segment is unknown and labeled as X. We want to see if we can discover the length X. To begin, I'll add a few segments to the figure. You probably expect by now that I'll construct a few triangles in our circle. After drawing in segments AD and BC, both of which are chords, I've created two triangles named triangle BEC and triangle AED. I'll also take note that angle BEC is congruent to angle AED because they are vertical angles. Next, I'll look for any other congruent angles. There will be a few more. If I look at angle CBD as an inscribed angle and do the same for angle CAD, I see that these two inscribed angles intercept the same arc in the circle. That means these angles are congruent as well. I'll add that detail to the figure. Okay, so I have two triangles and I can see that their sides are not congruent based on the given segment information, but I do know that these triangles have at least two congruent angles. That means these triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. With that in mind, I know that corresponding parts of similar triangles are proportional, not congruent, but proportional. So let's set up a ratio relating our corresponding parts. The segment between our two congruent angles at vertex B and E is 4. The corresponding segment on our other triangle lies between vertex A and E. Its measure is 6. So my first ratio is 4 to 6. On the other side of the triangle, I can construct the same ratio, which will be 5 to x. Now I can use algebra to solve for the unknown segment labeled x. I'll multiply both sides of the equation by x and also by 6. This gives the equivalent statement 4 times x equals 6 times 5. Solving for x, I'll get x equals 7 and a half. The theorem that we just discovered is called the power of a point. For a given point and a circle, the product of the lengths of the two segments from the point to the circle is constant along any line through the point and circle. We just looked at an example of case 1. Pay close attention to cases 2 and 3, which involve multiplying the outside segment by the sum of the inner and outer segments. In case 3, since there is a tangent line in only one segment, the segment x is multiplied by itself to give x squared. For the secant line, it's still the outer segment times the sum of the inner and outer segments. That'll be y times z plus y. Let's take a look at the example on the left. We're finding the exact value of z. Notice we have two secant lines. So this is an example of case two. We'll multiply the outer segment by the sum of the inner and outer segments. That's z times z plus z. For the other secant line, Again, we multiply the outer segment by the sum of the inner and outer segments. That'll be 4 times 4 plus 5. I'll go ahead and start simplifying here. z plus z gives 2z, and 4 plus 5 gives 9. On the left side, I multiply my two monomials, and I have z times 2z equals 2z squared. On the right, I still have 4 times 9. I'll go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 2. I now have z squared equals 2 times 9. I'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. Now I have z equals the square root of 2 times 3, or in standard form, z equals 3 times the square root of 2. Let's look now at the example on the right. We're asked to find the measure of fg, which is the segment on the outside for the upper secant line. Once again, I have two secants, one above and one below. I also note that I have these red bars indicating the length of the total segment. That'll be 3x for the entire segment length from f to h. On the bottom, that'll be 4x for the entire segment length from f to k. This is another example of case 2. Notice the outer segments are highlighted yellow as they are in the figure. I went ahead and multiplied the monomial by each of the binomials. So that will be 3x times x to give 3x squared, 3x times negative 5 to give negative 15x. On the right, I've got 4x times x to give 4x squared, and 4x times negative 6 to give negative 24x. I'm going to collect all my terms on one side of the equation, so I'll subtract 3x squared from both sides of the equation, and I'll also add 15x to both sides of the equation. This gives 0 equals x squared minus 9x. I notice that both terms have an x, so I can factor out an x. 
Now I'm going to look for the values of x that make this equation true. In other words, what values of x would force this equation to equal 0? Well, I know that if x equals 0, 0 times negative 9 will be 0. So that's one of my solutions. It's also true that if x equals positive 9, inside the parentheses I'll have 9 minus 9, which is 0, times 9, that also equals 0. So my other solution for x will be positive 9. Since we're asked to find the value of segment FG, it would not make a lot of sense here to choose the solution x equals 0. Why not? Well, 0 minus 5 is negative 5, and I won't be able to have a segment length of negative 5. So let's go with x equals 9. Well, 9 minus 5 is 4. That means the segment length for FG will be 4. That wraps up our investigation of segment lengths using the power of a point theorem. Next time, we'll look at how to handle segments involving two tangents. Thanks for watching.